My name's AJ Merrin, but you can call me James. And today, I'm taking you to Inverclyde and the James Watt docks to talk about the shipbuilding legacy and also to introduce you to another community group and charity in the area. Building's been active on the Clyde for hundreds, if not thousands of years by some reckoning. Right here was one of the Scott's shipbuilding yards. John Scott founded his company, Scott & Co, in 1711. First of all in Greenock, just sort of over that direction. It would continue growing with the Cartsdyke yard, which spanned over here near James Watt Docks. In fact, the company would continue growing until around 1967, where it reached its peak merging with the Lithgow's shipbuilding company to become Scott Lithgow's. And then a decade later, Scott Lithgow's got absorbed into the nationalized British shipbuilders. After that point, shipbuilding on the Clyde just continued into an indeterminable decline. Some ways the more concerning part for me is that people's entire lives were involved in building ships. And it wasn't just people literally working 
for the shipbuilders in the shipyards. There were rope makers, chain makers, upholsterers, carpenters, all sorts of people. Skilled people, skilled individuals. You might wonder why I'm wandering around in this sort of weird wasteland. Well, that's because this is about all that's left of part of one of the largest shipbuilding yards from Scott Lithgow's. But most of all, what I really want to talk about is those people's lives. Hundreds of businesses kept in business because of the shipbuilders. There's actually a word for this when you have one large scale employer. Now, uh, you probably know the word monopoly, which is when you have a single seller in control of a market. But when you have a single purchaser, that's called a monopsony. And that's kind of what was here, a monopsony. See, monopsonies aren't good either. And most people kind of have an innate understanding that monopolies aren't good, but monopsonies also not great. They're kind of a literal, you know, putting all your eggs in one basket. The only problem is, is that monopsonies, particularly when they are the single purchasers of labor, they employ a lot of people in one place or involve the employment of a lot of people associated with their single purchasing power. some oyster catchers going over there. So you might have thought a place like Inverclyde would have stayed away from monopsony industries after the shipbuilding. But politicians tend to like monopsonies because they employ a lot of people all at once. And so it was, IBM came into the picture. And whereas shipbuilding may have lasted for a couple of hundred years at least, IBM barely lasted a couple of decades. And so since then, Inverclyde's been in just a, a secondary industrial decline. And today, it often feels like local politicians are just once again looking for the next monopsony to employ a lot of people. I hear tell the latest thing that's uh, become trendy is the space industry. I mean, I thought IBM was a bit of a reach for a place that used to be steeped in shipbuilding, but the space industry is now the thing apparently. However, there is an alternative, an alternative that is starting to develop here, and an alternative that largely bases itself around the skills that already exist. You see, for me, that's the thing that makes more sense, because skills and education are forever. Well, at least for the life of the person. The alternative can be seen in the shed. What is the shed? Well, for that, I've got somebody to help explain. I'm Bruce Newlands. Uh, I'm currently the treasurer of the Inverclyde Shed and the former chair. I'd, I'd known about men's sheds for quite a while. I'd been partly involved with some of the early men's sheds and but from a different organisation, helping supply them with, with stuff. It kind of dawned on me in this part of the world that there didn't seem to be a men's shed set up. So I went asking around various different organisations, have you thought about this, have they done it? And I found out that there was some people meeting together to start up a men's shed in, in Inverclyde. 
Um, so I went along to that, that uh, group. They were meeting in a, a, a hired council room at the time. So there was a group of about maybe 20, 20 guys. We increasingly got involved in the kind of founding of it. I'd had experience of uh, setting up charities in the past. So I could lend them that experience about getting the constitution set up. Um, I'm probably the only founder left, been since 2018, so it's been about three, four years. But I was heavily involved with registering us as a charity and writing the help and write the constitution. The, the sheds themselves started, started in Australia. It, it really was this idea that men in particular find it difficult to socially bond, particularly once retired. There's a large degree of social isolation once outside the workplace. I tended to focus on kind of older men, particularly retired men, who didn't necessarily have trades or skills, but were interested in being in a kind of environment that was almost like a work environment, but didn't have the pressures of work. So you could focus on projects, work together. The, the phrase that the association sometimes uses is shoulder to shoulder. And it's this idea that Men often find it difficult to talk about issues face to face, particularly um, medical or health issues, for instance. And what actually happens is they might be working on a project together and not do an eye to eye and just mention, you know, I was at the, do I was at the doctor last week and uh, had some bad news and this person might know something about it. And there's a bit of peer support premised on being in a space it's got tools to focus on projects and the model is it's worldwide we were fortunate enough we became scotland's share of the year last year scotland i think there's about 180 in planning 120 has been set up all over scotland from the very north to the very south and in the rest of the uk as well what sometimes described as an open shed or a community shed so we've we are open to female members as well i think it's learning from our past and, and moving ahead in a, in a positive way. We've, we've, I think, I'd like to think that we've provided a space for people to come along. We sometimes use the phrase uh, meet, make, grow and share. So you come along, you meet your friends. I think you've, you've seen that today kind of thing. You have a cup of tea and a blether. Could be about anything, the past, the future, whatever. Kind of but you reconnect with people in a short period. Um, people can work on their own projects or they can share working projects together. So again, from that, we see friendships being built um, that are on people's own terms. What we have had demand for over the last two, three years has been a, a request to widen the demographic of who it's open to. So that really talks about um, increased hours, better facilities, heated facilities, <laughs> which we've, we've put in motion. So over the last two, three years, we've been the, the board in particular have been working very hard behind the scenes to, to secure premises for the long term. And by long term, we mean 25 years. So the, the main one is we've, we've been through a community asset transfer process for the council. So we've now got a 25 year lease uh, for one pound a year of a, a large premises um, that we're about to start uh, refurbishment work on next month. Um, to the tune of about £800,000. Not only give us a space for that period, but it has features like solar panels that will charge the batteries of our tools, for instance, under an electric van. So the idea is that we create a sustainable place, and I mean that in the widest term, socially and, and uh, environmentally, uh, for a long term. So it takes the pressure off us, and those things that I mentioned allows them to happen without the pressure of funding on it. It will be a space that can allow people to meet, make, grow and share. We, all, all councils, um, after the Scottish Government's community asset legislation, should keep a register of uh, premises that they own and explain the, the status of it, whether it's empty, uh, occupied uh, or, or others. Um, the Inverclyde Council did that, so we looked at that list and to our surprise, we found that they owned a light industrial building. <laughs> I think most most people, if they did that, and their local authorities might find that the the council owns an old police station. This particular building suits what it is a shed, and it suits what the shed does, kind of thing. So we've been kind of quite fortunate in that respect. It was it was a particularly dilapidated building being used by the council. Um, so also for the opportunity to, to fully renovate it as well. So it was proven quite difficult, despite it being on the list, it was proven quite difficult to find out more information about it. Um, so being quite a nosy person, I basically went down and looked through the letterbox to see what was going on inside. 
and I saw a bit of activity and what it turned out to be was that the council street lighting department was effectively squatting in their own buildings. It took a few meetings to basically establish that it is a building that's always available and the community asset legislation basically asks communities to demonstrate that they could put it to better use, better community use. So clearly being used as a store for street lighting has particularly no community benefit and for us to give us a long, a long life in the community, uh, it brings a huge community benefit to it. Um, we're fortunate in that my training, I'm an architect by, by profession, so I could also quickly look at the building and understand what needed to be done and what could potentially be as well for us. And roughly size-wise, it's about four times the size of the spaces we've got. It's in a more central location, so location is quite important. It's better connected to public transport. And it's got a history to it um, that's within the kind of traditional uh, shipbuilding areas of Inverclyde as well. So for us, it kind of had a, a heritage aspect that was interesting and it, it could add and in, in enrich in our own story as well because many of our members have got that history as well. So these things all seem to come together to maybe point that it might be a, a, a perfect space for us to use. It, it, all things being equal, we're hoping it'll be uh, May. This, this year, so we've we've just went through a tender process. Um, it's been difficult because prices are, are high. Everything's soaring at the moment. We'd specified some Siberian larch, and clearly there's a problem with Siberian larch at the moment. <laughs> so it's things like that that you know, we can we can compromise and be practical. Around like that. Steel, what I say, I'm at the moment, and we've been very fortunate that. This project is still a council owned building. It's a long term lease that we've got on it. So, the funding to um, refurbish the, the building is in partnership with the council, making an application to the Scottish Government. And the Scottish Government has filled that gap that we had in the funding. So, and we've just had confirmation on it. So, we're all ready to go. And we'd, we'd hope um, to have it complete by October, so our AGM in October. We would like to be having our AGM in the, in the refurbished building. But, um, no, it's been a it's been a hard slog. It's been a lot of work, um, and for other other groups, community groups, it's a little bit of grit and a bit of resilience. And what I also say is, be terrier-like. Just don't give up. It does require resilience. You just need to keep at it. And it's easy to say, but through a good good governance, a good board, and a good membership. But that's the key. And we've, we've got that. We've got a good story to tell, I think, and hopefully we can tell it through, through people like yourself, too. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. So, with that, I'm going to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you'd like to see more like this, like and subscribe. And let's see where I go next. You might wonder why I'm wandering around in this sort of weird wasteland. Well, that's because this is about all that's left of part of one of the largest shipbuilding yards from Scott Lithgow's. And as you can see, I've got this really dramatic backlight from the rising sun, which is, you know, just kind of awesome. <laughs>